This is the ultimate guide to heat maps surrounding Somerville, South Carolina. We're gonna dive into a ton, so let's get right into it. If you're like most people and you're trying to look at Somerville on a map, it can be somewhat confusing. Somerville is just relatively large. So when we look at Somerville in a whole, and I'm gonna zoom out here, it's kind of wild to see how far Somerville actually goes. Right up here, kind of where this area is, and I'm gonna use my pen here. So if you look, right about here is where Somerville ends. Somerville is essentially gonna end in this corner. This is 17. Uh, this goes up into Monk's Corner. And then you have this, this really strong border, essentially, of all still Somerville. And then when you come down here to 61, right about here is where Somerville ends. You still have a ton, a ton of space. And actually, in my opinion, the way I'm looking at it, you've got a, a, lot, of, a lot of neighborhoods in between that, those areas. So um, let's remove those circle points and let's start breaking Somerville down in smaller bits, okay? So we're gonna break it down in a little bit smaller area for you. This area, as I mentioned before, this is the um, Cane Bay community. It really ends like right there. So if you're somebody you're like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna move there, but we don't wanna be on the Dorchester side, we wanna be on the Berkeley side, but we, we kinda wanna be maybe where you get a little bit more property. So right here is Cane Bay, essentially. And so Cane Bay is, as you can see, it's gonna be about 8,500 homes when it's fully complete. You have tons of neighborhoods in there. Not only has its elementary, its middle, but its high school all within the borders of the neighborhood. And some people say, well, that's fantastic. That's a genius idea. Why doesn't every neighborhood do it? I don't know. I, I have no idea. So I, maybe people get lazy behind the wheel. I, I really don't know. Get it together, man. Genius idea though. One flaw, one small flaw. They do make, they do allow the county to determine what parts and what areas go to those schools. So obviously not only does Cane Bay service Cane Bay or parts of Cane Bay, but it services parts of Monk's Corner, Goose Creek, some parts of Nexon are zoned uh, Cane Bay, even though Nexon now has its own elementary school. But there's just an overcrowding issue and sometimes too many kids trying to go there. And, and the nice part is, is we're getting close to that rezone. We just had one recently where it did zone out some of the neighborhoods from Cane Bay, helping alleviate some of the, the headache that a lot of people experience. Especially if you were moving into Cane Bay, that was very frustrating for a lot of people. I totally get it. But focus on this. Now we have more people in the neighborhood going to the correct school. So, so within Cane Bay, you've also got your shopping center. So you've got Publix, Chick-fil-A, AT&T, Starbucks, Eggs Up Grill. If we pull in a little bit tighter, you've got Edward Jones Financial, Creekville Spirits, Liquor Store. Yeah, that Chinese place is... I'm, I'm just not gonna say anything. Keep it real. <laughs> um, Big Blue Marble Academy. Uh, that's gonna be a new um, child care services location. So not only do you have uh, the church at Cane Bay that has a after school program, but now Big Blue Marble Academy will be for uh, drop offs for kids of uh, younger younger ages and things like that. So you'll be able to drop your kids off and have daycare services as well. Additional to the shopping, you're gonna see the rest right across the street from Cane Bay. You not only have your Blue Water gas station, but you do have your Buffalo Wild Wings, Marco's Pizza, Jersey Mike Subs, Sticky Fingers Rib House. Um, and then in here, you got your McDonald's, AutoZone, Time to Shine Car Wash, because we need more car washes in this world. It's fantastic. Killing me, Smalls! Over here, you've got Scoops 50. You also have a uh, wax location and threading salon, Dunkin' Donuts. So, got a little bit of everything in Cane Bay. Uh, I would say some the, they're missing probably a big anchor store. Backing back out, if you continue around Cane Bay Boulevard, now let me just zoom into this bad boy. Let me bring you guys up to speed on this. So this, I, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with the population here in Somerville, but I, people can't figure this out for the life of them. So if you're on the outer, you're supposed to exit, but not the way the county says. The county says, hey, if you're in the outer and you wanna cross over in front of somebody, that's A-OK. -okay. So. 
Here's the problem. This is an accident nightmare. It, it really is. There's a ton of, there's at least there one or two a week, a week. One, my wife was actually unfortunately involved in because again, the woman did not live in this neighborhood. She was bringing her child to the school that she doesn't live in and she lives in Goose Creek. She wasn't familiar with the roundabout system here. And so she just crossed right in front of my wife, forcing my wife to end up hitting her and colliding with her. And so, you know, it's just, it's, this is a nightmare. You need to know this. If you're going to move into Cane Bay, you are going to deal with this roundabout because it goes out to Nexton. It goes back into where the rest of the neighborhoods are. You'll come out this way to go to Publix and the schools. The entrance for the schools are right here. So you go here and then that's how you get into the elementary, the middle. And it's kind of like a, a circular system that they've put in place. But I'll tell you what, that roundabout is an absolute nightmare. Here's my little tip. You send your kid to a school in a neighborhood you don't live in, learn how to drive the road so you don't get into accidents. So coming back into Cane Bay, you have all these subsections. You've got Magnolia, Sanctuary Cove, the Oaks, the Coves, Lindera Preserve. So many neighborhoods and so many neighborhoods have different things for each area. Like, so for instance, Lennar in Lindera Preserve has a great lawn. This is where you'll see like kids doing soccer, um, tons and tons of different activities will happen in this neighborhood. Uh, even 4th of July, food truck rodeos. But here's where things get really cool. We have the largest YMCA on the East Coast in Cane Bay Plantation. And the best part about it is not only do you have the outdoor softball, baseball fields, you got soccer fields, pickleball, tennis, indoor pool, um, workout gym, and a library right next to the YMCA, which makes it very convenient, Berkeley County Library as well. So if you like to take your kids to go read in the middle of the day, want something to do, if you live in the neighborhood, all golf, golf cartables. So um, that's another thing that I think a lot of people underestimate in these master plan communities is that there's, there's golf cart paths everywhere. If you look, you can see there's golf cart path there and then all along. So as we come over to here, you're gonna see this is all golf cart path. So you can golf cart the entire neighborhood and get around from the back of the neighborhood to the front of the neighborhood. It just makes it so much more convenient. And scooter, bicycle, it doesn't matter. No, just nothing gas powered. So if you're those people that are riding around on the ATVs doing wheelies and stuff, better knock it off because the Berkeley County Sheriffs are patrolling. These guys are like, how does he know so much about these neighborhoods? It's because I do my homework. I read a lot. I get into a lot of the different things that are that are happening. I make sure that I help you provide this valuable information. So you're, let's pause for a second. If you're enjoying this content, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, give me some feedback. Do you like Cane Bay? Do you like the shops that it offers there? Tell me your thoughts. And if you're thinking of relocating here, give me a call, days, nights, weekends, holidays, doesn't matter, 843-226-5535. All right, jumping back in. So we got the rest of Cane Bay here, goes all the way back to this, uh, what's called Black Tom Road. And then you've got 17, which comes down there and meets Black Tom Road. And you got a lot of places in between. 17's filled with a lot of restaurants, you know, kind of more old school shops, car dealerships, things like that. Now this is where you get into kind of the hustle and bustle of Berkeley Somerville. And so what I'm getting mean by that is, if I zoom in and I pull our corners pretty tight, right in here, is Carnes Crossroads. Now Carnes Crossroads is right off North Main Street. It's kind of in the, the hustle and bustle. It is a Lennar community, but there are other pre-owned homes from other builders like David Weekly, Toll Brothers was in there, Pulte was in there. So it's a really great community. Um, you can see they still have a ton of land to build. So this is all Carnes Crossroads right here. One of the neat things that I think that they're gonna do in this neighborhood is it's gonna be an agri -hood. Beside the $33 million amenity center they're putting in, they're going to have an 11 acre uh, agri-hood essentially for agricultural purposes. And I think this is a really cool concept for neighborhoods that more neighborhoods should have. Um, they don't, but 
Niagara Hood is a pretty sweet idea. So if you're also looking for hardy plank, it's an all hardy plank community, no vinyl siding. And then this continues down here. This is all North Main Street, bringing you kind of the rest of the way into the hustle and bustle of things. <clears throat> One of the other things I wanted to mention here, this is State Road, which goes up from uh, North Main Street up to Cane Bay. And then this is Nexton Parkway. So next in Parkway brings you right out to the 26. So this stretch of road, okay, is gonna be how you're gonna get in and out of Cane Bay to go to the 26. Same way if you live in Nexon, Midtown, Brighton Park Village, you're gonna be able to get out to the highway via this roadway. But you can see how everything's gonna come together eventually. This is all gonna be future commercial. Um, they're actually planning a big shopping center outside of Nexon, which is the North Creek Village area. So that's it's a, that's what it's called. But then also up in here, you've got a part of Nexton. Uh, this is all essentially just Nexton. It does look a little confusing, but this is kind of the borders of everything. Let's say you uh, want to live in a 55 plus. Not only do you have Del Webb, okay? But you also have Ashton Wood's new neighborhood up here. Right in here, you got Woodwind right off Nexon Parkway. And that is an Ashton Wood's neighborhood. It is an active adult. It is an attached product. So if you said, no, Ryan, we only want detached 55 plus, then this wouldn't be the neighborhood for you. This is an attached product, full community center and everything like that. But just to give you an idea, we've got North Creek Village up here. You've got Bradford Point by Sentex. So that's more of like the vinyl sided product, um, not as many options, pretty, pretty basic, not as many like upgrades and things like that that you'd see in Midtown or even uh, Brighton Park Village. In here, off of that Nexon Parkway, you do have the elementary school. They just broke ground um, somewhere in here for the new middle school. So that's exciting. Nexon's gonna have a middle school pretty soon, which they desperately, desperately need. And they do need a high school. Um, I, I will say that, that's the other thing. Now getting on into Nexon, some of the parts that aren't updated here, you've got a gas station that's right here, the home telecom building that's right here. And then you've got the co-op, uh, which is Frozen Rosé. You have my friends at LPC Kitchen that are in there. And then, if you're a pickleball fan, whew, we have a pickleball court for you, is the new pickle bar. If you're a pickleball fan, you are going to love the pickle bar. And then on top of that, this is where the new Harris Teeter is. So if you're gonna be like, well, Ryan, they've got a Publix over by Cane Bay, but what do they have in Nexon? Well, this is what they've got. Publix is also doing a grocery store right across the street. The Harris Theater will be open before the Publix, but just kind of want to break it down in location for you. I'm sure some of you are like, well, Ryan, that's all great for them, but what about if we live in Carnes Crossroad? What about us? Well, I got you. I didn't forget about you. Right here is where they're putting a Publix, and check this out. Right in here, what I have been told, is going to be another Harris Teeter. They've already broken ground, these trees are gone, so if you're like, oh, I can't wait to go see those beautiful trees, eh, they're gone. You also, I wanna mention this, if you're gonna be in Carnes or Hewing Farms, and Hewing Farms is right here, it's a Mungo community. It is a hardy plant community, but it is Hewing Farms by Mungo Homes, which make excellent floor plan if you're looking for a three car garage, you're looking for a little bit more of a designer look to homes, they're doing it. The thing I will mention is if you live in Carnes Crossroads or Hewing Farms, you are currently zoned for the Carolyn Lewis K through eighth school. Now you might be saying, well, Ryan, what's Carolyn Lewis and why is that so special? Well, just like Cane Bay, this neighborhood or this school is right smack dab in the neighborhood and you can actually get to it by golf car, bike, whatever have you. So, you know, there's always, that's a huge win, but they're about to open a road, as you can see right here, for the access from State Road. If you're in the school and you're like, you know, I need to go get groceries after this, you can go do that. You hop out on State Road. And look how close the Roper St. Francis Berkeley Hospital is. Now, I don't know about you, but that is really close. They're expanding it right now. If you drive by this, they're building a whole new expansion onto the hospital, which is fantastic because it needs it. We got a lot of people moving here. And the best part is in Nexton, right over here, they're building the all new MUSC 
hospital. So we've talked about the areas, the neighborhoods and things like that. I want to kind of pull in a little bit. Now you may see some older neighborhoods over here. A lot of these areas are more of your like trailer park um, style housing. And again, nothing wrong with that, but you know, it's not the, it's not the brand new neighborhoods that you would be seeing across the street. I just want to point that out to you because everybody asks why a lot of these neighborhoods have HOAs. Uh, it is the South, you know, people like to leave their car in their front yard for 500 years and watch it deteriorate. But again, if that's not for you, just know that there are neighborhoods you can move into where they have an HOA, that's not gonna happen. So now, one of my favorite spots, next in Square. And if you're like, well, Ryan, why is next in Square your, like, your jam? And I'm gonna explain this to you right now. Not only do you have all of this, while well, they really need to update all these photos. You got Hall's Chop House, you got Pugans, you got Vicious Biscuit, which I just spoke to somebody today and they were like, not a fan of the Vicious Biscuit. I was like, really? You know, like it was just too many carbs and it was too too big and too much. Totally get it. But that place got a line out its door every single day. So they pull in a certain clientele. The other place that I absolutely love, Taco Boy. The margaritas there, money. <laughs> and then you've got Fuji Grill over here. Guys, this is just a like a happening spot. Carolina Ale House. I mean, you've got a gym, so if you want to go run off some of the food that you, you know, you ate, that's okay. You can do that too. But this is where all those really, really great restaurants and things are. So if you're someone who's coming here, and I get this question a lot, and that's why I said this is the ultimate guide, guys. I'm doing a deep dive into Somerville so you don't have to. Oh my God, how did I forget about Bad Daddy's Burger Bar? Yeah, Bad Daddy's Burger Bar. You've got the Courtyard Marriott, okay? Great place to stay if you're visiting. And then as we go up here, you've got a couple other hotels that keep you in next in. You've got the Cambria, and then you have the Hilton Garden Inn, Homewood Suites. These hotels are priced just a little higher because they're in next in. If you cross the 26, not only do you have Home 2, you've got Staybridge Suites, you've got Avid Hotel, Home 2, uh, Stay Bridge, Country Inn and Home and Suites. You just have a little bit of a cheaper option. And then literally the way for you to go to Nexton is you come down this holiday drive, make a left on North Main Street, and it brings you right over to all the action in Nexton. And the only reason I'm bringing all this up is because most of you do plan a meeting with me and you're like, well, Ryan, where should we stay? This is where you should stay. So part of this is considered Ladson. Um, some of it's still Somerville, some of it's Ladson, Sangree. This is an area where you'll find houses in the 200s, maybe the high 100s, a lot of brick ranch, older homes that may need some updating. Uh, you will see some bigger lots in Sangree, but the homes aren't as big. It's just an area where you want to drive through and make sure it's the right spot for you. I will say, I've had some people go, well, is this got an HOA? And I go, nope, no HOA. And then when they get there, they go, oh, okay. I'm like, is the neighbor always repping his motorcycle to two o'clock in the morning? Yeah, probably, you know, so something to consider. Now we're at the 26. This is where I call this the great divide. The 26 essentially divides everything um, from this area, right, over as Berkeley County. And then when you get right about here, everything this way is gonna be Dorchester, okay? Dorchester, Berkeley. Now, the real question, well, Ryan, what's the big difference? Well, you can ask a lot of people different things. My things are the obvious things, taxes, okay? Home property taxes in Berkeley County are gonna be much less than Dorchester County, um, probably about $800 to $1,000 difference. The other thing, is your insurance might be a little bit higher in Dorchester. Um, I have found that some of my clients pay maybe $1,200 to $1,300 a year versus $900 to $1,000 in Berkeley. Don't know what plays behind that, but I'm assuming that they have some sort of scale that they go off of that makes that determination. Let's dive into Dorchester County, okay? So let's move this up a little bit. Now, there are gonna be areas, and so everybody asks me this because like, they go, well, what about up here, Ryan? Like, what about in these areas? You know, this kind of like wooded area. So there, this is where you see like a lot of commercial trucking, a lot of commercial trucking. If, if you go up further again, you've got more um, commercial 
trucking areas, Tri-County, um, Carolina Diesel Services. So as we go up further, this is the Volvo Job Training Center. So this is the campus, but what you have to understand is this campus, this is gonna be massive because this goes all the way down to State Road, which will take you directly into uh, Cane Bay. So if you live in Cane Bay, you're working at Volvo, you're gonna have a really great ability to get in and out and get there fast. You've got the massive Walmart distribution center. So a lot of folks, a lot of jobs here. This is a, actually a one to two mile round uh, distribution center for walmart.com, chewy.com. So if you ever place a Walmart order, you're gonna get it pretty quickly. And then uh, we also do have a couple of distribution centers for Amazon. So looking at the Dorchester side of Somerville, let's look at this. So right out of the gate, you've got things like your, your smaller, older neighborhoods back here, uh, some apartment complexes, but for shopping, okay, everybody's like, well, where's our Target? This is Azalea Square. So this is gonna have your Kohl's, it's gonna have your Target, Target. This is gonna have your Five Below and some other stores in there, TJ Maxx, okay? And then over here, you've got your Best Buy, your Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, and then a bunch of other smaller stores, shoe stores, you name it. You got your Chick-fil-A down here, um, movie theater. Um, I'm never worried about not getting into a movie there, so that's something to consider. Um, as we continue further down this North Main Street, this is where you're gonna see a lot of commercial, Chipotle, Starbucks. You got your Lowe's, you got your Home Depot over here, you got your bottles, beverage services there. Nothing but cakes. I mean, again, Mediterranean food is, is absolutely huge here. So, you know, if you're thinking like, where's, where's the best places to eat, Ryan? I mean, throw a freaking stone and you'll hit a place to eat. And then as we continue further down, again, more restaurants. I'm gonna pinch in here so you guys can see all of them. You've got more restaurants, banking, attorneys, Wendy's, kicking chicken. You got, you know, your traditional places, Pizza Hut. And then again, as we get further down into the historic part of Somerville, because we're getting there, again, this North Main is long, okay? So when people are like, well, if I lived in the ponds, how long would it take me to get to downtown Somerville? And well, that's a kind of a loaded question because it could take you a, a bit of time, especially when this is all backed up. Now we're in the historic district. This is Hutchinson Square. This is where the Flower Town Festival, if you watched one of my other videos where I talk about the 10 things, the reasons why, what you need to know about moving to Somerville, uh, and they, I'll put a link up here right to that video, but this is where I was. This is the Hutchinson Square. This is the historic district. All the historic buildings are here. If you look, I'm gonna move this around a little bit. Let me remove my circles that I drew. All these big oak trees right here, you've got the Wine and Tapas Bar, Laura Somerville, the Ice House, which is a great place to eat, the Somerville Dorchester History Museum. So if you come in here and you're like, well, we wanna know more about Somerville, check that out. This is where the Flower Town Festival starts. And look, at it, it continues all the way down North Main Street for over like a mile, if not long further. This is where we get into the historic district of Somerville. And when I say district, we're taking all of these homes, and these are all in the historic. And, and actually, I would say maybe a little bit up into here too. Um, but all of these areas, all of these homes in these communities, these are gonna be historic, beautiful houses with antebellum porches. Um, some are even like, they've got uh, a couple of homes in there by Estee Lauder, I think was one of them. I mean, owned by like famous people who have lived here hundreds of years. These houses are beautiful, gas, porch, lanterns, real big wide plank flooring. I mean, it's beautiful. Let's dive back into this. So here we are on 17, we're still cruising down, okay? Here's Somerville High School. And this is, Greg Middle School's actually right behind it. So if you're in the Dorchester District 2 area, if that's the desirable area that you wanna be, you have Somerville High, Greg Middle there. Beach Hill is gonna be a little further down. We get to the neighborhood portion of things right here is the ponds. 
Pons is a newer style home community, but they also have some mature older homes. T Plantation that they converted into a nice master plan community neighborhood. And um, most of the backside of the ponds is gonna be more new construction. You're gonna see more of the newer homes. But one of the things I wanted to mention is not only do they have a YMCA, they also do have an emergency, emergency medical services fire department in there. But here's my big hang up with the ponds. There is no grocery store nearby. You definitely have to drive your kids to school. One way in, one way out of that neighborhood. There is no stoplight outside of this neighborhood. So what ends up happening is, is all the traffic bottlenecks to the back, of, back through the neighborhood. This didn't happen as much three years ago, but once they added more and more homes, this is starting to become a problem. I would hope that eventually they'll put in a stoplight. All right, guys, we're, we are like burning through Somerville. The other thing I'll mention in, um, in the ponds, you also have Crestwind Charleston. That is another 55 plus neighborhood. So if you're somebody that's like, man, I, I you know, I'm not a Del Weber. Um, you know, I, I really am not a, a Four Seasons kind of guy in Cane Bay. You know, what else is there for me? Well, Crestwood Charleston's got a really a great amount of floor plans. And actually the lot sizes that they have are pretty, pretty nice. Um, I was just actually looking at them with some of my clients and I absolutely loved them. So we are going to talk a little bit about Summer's Corner. So Summer's Corner, you're coming in, you're gonna make a left. They have a roundabout there. And then in here you have the villages, okay? And then this is all the villages too. So this is all housing. And then as we come down further, and boy, they really do need to update their, uh, their Google Maps. Whew. This is all Azalea Ridge. This is Sweetgrass, okay? So this is exactly the roots here. This is Azalea Ridge. Now Azalea Ridge is completely sold out. Um, the only thing you're gonna be able to find there is pre-owned. You got Sand Hill Elementary in here. And then you also do have the new Horizons at Summer's Corner. And we'll talk about that in a second. One of the things I'll mention is that if we continue further down, you also have in here, Heron's Walk, okay? So this is Heron's Walk, another Lennar neighborhood. No picking selections, you get what you get. If you like a floor plan, you're gonna have to just pick whichever one they have available on whatever date, on whatever lot. So there's not a whole lot of options when it comes to Lennar. But the proximity to Ashley Ridge High School is right there. You also have Sand Hill Elementary and then Rawlings School of Performing Arts um, right here as well. So. Definitely a big neighborhood, master plan community neighborhood. They are gonna have one amenity center, and I will tell you this, this may make or break your decision, but they are doing a club at Summer's Corner. It is going to be a 33 and a half million to $40 million project. It is supposed to be the biggest outdoor water neighborhood thing in all of South Carolina, but let me say this. If it's taking as long for them to get a Publix in the neighborhood as it is for them to put this in, I'd be a bit hesitant for whatever days they tell me because they really don't even know. Even the salespeople, they're just guesstimating. But all of this is going to be Summer's Corner and they're gonna have one amenity center. Does anybody see? No, the Publix that has been given the land, right? Publix says, hey, we own this land. Nothing. Publix, what is up? What's up with that? What's up with that? You gotta get your grocery store in there. I don't know what I don't know what needs to be said other than that. And then right outside the summer's corner, you've got Legend Oaks Golf Course. So if you're somebody who's like, oh man, we love uh, Beach Hill Elementary School's right here in East Edisto Middle School's right there as well. But if you're somebody that's like, man, Ryan, we wanna live near or on a golf course, this right here, any of your zoned DD2 schools. That's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, I want you to see all the different options that you have when you're looking at um, Somerville. Now, as I mentioned before, Summer's Corner is here and then it essentially ends is right about here. 61, you can go to all your plantations, Middleton Plantation, Magnolia Plantation and Gardens. 
go see all the beautiful trees and things like that. But the reason I want to show you is right here is where kind of Ravenel picks up. And if you're not familiar with Ravenel, it is essentially Somerville's little sister. Uh, it's not developed like Somerville is, but it's gonna get there. What I wanna point out is you have neighborhoods like True Homes Homecoming, which are also zoned DD2 for the Dorchester District 2 schools. But look how incredible this is. If you're in Homecoming, can you get to Ashley Ridge High School in basically a, a two minute drive, but then you can keep going and get to that Walmart neighborhood market a heck of a lot faster than anybody else. Uh, in Summer's Corner. So not only you can drop your kid off, you can go get groceries, all that good stuff. So you've seen Somerville from Berkeley County Corner all the way down to Somerville to the to the to basically the edge of there, Ravenel, right on the border. And I've shown you the neighborhoods in between, I've shown you the shopping in between, shown you where the festivals are in between, shown you the restaurants in between. Like I said, this is the ultimate guide to living here in Somerville. Once again, Ryan McHugh, your neighborhood expert, 843-226-5535. Hey, all you gotta do is pick up the phone, give me a call, shoot me a text and say, Ryan, we wanna buy a house, help us. And I've got your back. If you love this video, do me a favor and go ahead and click this video right here.